I met with Eugene Peterson at his home in rural Montana to ask him why he undertook such an ambitious project. Well, Dr. Peterson, the most read book of all time with a new look and one of your uh, writings has been that the Bible is a plunge into reality. So here we've got reality in a Bible. We've got oil spills, we've got New Orleans, our own Armageddon-like pictures. What do you think of the new Bible and its illumination? It's very, it's fascinating and it's accurate um, because the biggest hurdle people have um, in reading the Bible is setting on a shelf and thinking it's a holy book a reverent book, and um, it doesn't have anything to do with their lives. And the whole task of um, Bible translation is to get past that and get it into the, into the language, the culture of today. So that's wonderful. He's a man passionate about words. He's devoted his life to studying them. And when it comes to the book known as the Word of God, well, He's an expert there, too, translating the Bible from its original languages into contemporary American. Well, help us understand, what is a Bible? Well, the word actually means book. It's biblos. And it's just, it's all it is, is a book. They didn't start with a Bible. They started with worship, they started with stories, started with prayers, and then people would come forth who were really good at this, good storytellers, good poets. And these things were written and the people found that this was not just a book, just not just writing like anything else, but there was something, um, they detected some, um, well, spirit of God, spirit, aliveness. And um, they started collecting them and gradually we got what we have now. And is it the voice of God? Are these the words of God? Not exactly. Uh, I don't think uh, God speaks in Greek or Hebrew or English. Um, these are words which God uses in order to get His word, His, His salvation revealed to us. It's revelation is what it is. Heady stuff, but at 76, this professor has spent decades pastoring and teaching. He believes people need to do more than just read the Bible. They need to understand its story. And every couple of generations, um, the Bible is, the language of the Bible is modernized to make it a, a common language or to keep it a common language. Tell us about your experience, your invitation to make the common language. This is my, um, my Bible that you've written. Are you comfortable being with that? You've written my Bible that I'm reading? Sounds a little pretentious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but this is the message which you spent 10 years of your life doing, at least 10 years, right? 12. 12 to get this done. You took those ancient words and it was your turn to modernize them. That's right. And what, what did you learn in the process? What I learned was when God wants us to have His Word, His revelation, He uses the language that we use every day. And what are the sensitivities then of taking those ancient words and modernizing them? Well, it's difficult um, because people get used to um, a Bible read in church. And, um, and we, see, one of the things that we have, which is, um, is wonderful, but also a problem, is the King James Version of the Bible. That was translated in England when the English language was at its highest, its best. These are the, this is the time of Shakespeare, of Milton. Um, and so this language became the translation language into English which was far different from the way it was in Greek. So they, even in that time, it was not the language of the people. It was elevated. This bookshelf is filled with the fruit of Eugene Peterson's efforts to wrestle the elevated language of Christianity's Bible back to what it was intended to be, easily read, easily understood.
a book of sacred words inspired by a loving God. It's called The Message. When Listen Up returns, what is it about these words that gives them their sacred power? They teach you that God is present in your life, that God speaks words which make you who you are. Closed captioning provided by Duca Financial Services Credit Union. Discover more affordable banking at duca.com. We love getting your calls, voicemails, emails, video clips, and letters. Pop by our website and answer this week's poll question. Do you think adding celebrity photos to the Bible alters its message? You'll find all our polling at listenuptv.com. Well, packaging aside, is there something about the words of this Bible that have given this book its staying power? We asked scholar and Bible translator of the popular Bible called The Message, Dr. Eugene Peterson. You use the term sacred words, sacred language. Your language in the message, I don't think you'd call it sacred. I'm thinking like a verse like uh, Matthew 6, 34, concentrate on what God is doing right now. I mean, it doesn't get any plainer than that. How do you still know that these are inspired by God? Those, that, that this is still uh, the ideas of God coming through when it gets through that many levels of modernizing? Well, you have to be very careful. Um, the, the kind of principle I had in my mind as I did this is when people read Isaiah in the Hebrew times, they didn't need a dictionary to find out what he said. They didn't need a handbook to explain things. Um, when people read the Gospel of John in New Testament times, they didn't, they didn't have to have a teacher. Um, they didn't have to have anybody explain this. So if, you can, if, the, if the language at that point was, accept, was understandable without uh, a lot of learning, I think we can do that again. I don't want to oversimplify this, but all language is sacred. Language is a gift of God. Language is what distinguishes us from all the other plant, animal life on the planet. And when that begins to be experienced as revelation, as love, as forgiveness, that's, there's something going on there that's very close to, well, it's not close to it is, the Spirit of God. So yes, it is inspired. So these are conversations inspired by the Spirit of God that teach me. Yes. Tell me what they teach. What, what do these ancient stories of people's experience teach me? They teach you that God is present in your life, that God speaks words which make you who you are, God speaks words that change who you are, deal with your sin, your guilt, whatever, your doubts. Here at Peterson's home in rural Montana, God's presence does seem close. And it's been very deliberate for Eugene and his wife Jan to cultivate that. 11 million copies of his Bible have been sold, over 30 other books written but he's never employed any staff to help. In this first TV interview he's ever granted, he explains that busyness and technology needs to be kept at bay so the voice of God can be connected with. Number one, turn off the television. He told me that the average person in Canada watches 21 hours of television. Number two, um, do some memorizing. Memorizing is the easiest way to keep something important in your mind in a meditative way. The Bible is a story. Now some people say, well, it's a lot of things. It's poetry, it's sermons, it's genealogies, it's proverbs. No, it's a story. Now, 
Jesus is the story complete. And you wanted people to get to know the story of Jesus. Yeah. Why? Why? Why was that important to you? See, what I wanted, what I was hoping to do in, in, the, in translating the message was to get people into the story. I tell people, don't study the Bible. Read it. Read it like you're reading a letter. Uh, read it like you're reading a novel. Let the truth of the book shape your life. But don't ask too many questions. You're not looking for information. You're looking for a relationship. So if we can get past the religious uh, patina that's been put over everything, we become more human and more Christian at the same time. Or maybe I should say more human and more saved at exactly the same time. Um, save is a big word for us. Um, do you know what the word means in Hebrew? It means space. Give us space. Salvation is, is a prairie. Um, all the fences are down. All the doors are opened. Uh, salvation is entering into largeness, God's largeness. And um, I love that word. If we stay with this, if we pay attention to what's going on, stay with this book, stay with these words, there's no way in which we can uh, not eventually get caught into the conversation, brought into the conversation. And that's what we're doing. And that's why we have these Bibles all over the world.